Is Sandcat a lovely predator of the desert? What's the most venomous snake in the Sahara Desert? Is it true that the Sandcat doesn't need to drink water? The Sandcat boasts fluffy ears, big eyes, and tiny noses, making it easy to mistake for a charming kitten you desire to scoop up and bring home. However, that would be a big mistake. While they share some physical traits with domestic cats, sand cats are as wild as they come. They're ferocious hunters and champions of the harsh desert environment. In this video, we're going to discuss that is why sand cat is the king of the desert, poisonous snakes against the desert cat. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick to the end. Before starting the video, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to never miss out on any of our videos. Can sand cats kill desert snakes? Yes, sand cats kill snakes very efficiently, even if they're venomous. In some areas of the sand cat's distribution, reptiles play an important role in the cat's diet. For example, the nomads of the Sahara Desert in North Africa say that the sand cat has a reputation for being snake hunters. Sand cats are naturally rare, they're around somehow. The disappearance of sand cats is actually more a reflection of their behavior. This breed of cats is extremely shy and absolutely secretive, so secretive, in fact, that they love to hide from the world. The Arabian sand cat, also known as Gordon's wildcat, is a shy and reclusive animal found in the United Arab Emirates. They're mostly active during the night hours around the barren deserts and rocky valleys. These cats are fearless snake hunters, known to catch and kill the most venomous snakes in the UAE. Encounters with these wild cats are extremely rare. However, similar to the red fox, the Arabian sand cat could be a carrier for rabies. If they're infected with the virus, they're likely to attack for no reason and could infect you. If you're fortunate enough to sight an Arabian sand cat in the wild, observe from a distance and do your best not to disturb them. While some cat species such as bobcats pass through desert landscapes, the sand cat is the only feline to live exclusively in the desert. Additionally, sand cats don't need much water at all. They can go for weeks without a single sip, getting all the moisture they need from the prey they consume. They can easily live in areas far away from water, and even though they drink water when they can, they get enough hydration just from their prey. This prey is usually small rodents, but occasionally the sand cat will hunt hares, birds, spiders, insects, and reptiles. And out here, in the scorching desert, the sand cat is bound to face venomous snakes. Luckily, for the cat, it's an expert snake killer. Sand cats are opportunistic hunters and will attack what's available. In the Sahara, one such prey item is the snake. It seems that the sand cat is more than able to kill venomous snakes as a normal event. Sand cats have a bite force quotient of 130 compared to the domestic cat at 67. This means that the bite of the sand cat is about twice as strong as the domestic cats. Dragesco Joffe photographed a sand cat attacking and killing a viper 40 centimeters long. The snake was forced to lower its head after the sand cat hit it with quick blows from her paws. This led to a blow to the snake's head, followed by a killing bite into the snake's neck. Beginning at the head, the sand cat devoured the viper in 10 minutes. The viper, Viperidae, is a family of more than 200 species of venomous snakes. Vipers are distinguishable by their long, hinged fangs that allow a deep perforation of venom into their prey. There are four subfamilies of viper snakes, Phaeus vipers, Azemiopinae, night adders, Causinae, Pit Vipers, Crotalinae, and True or Pitless Vipers, Viperinae. The most common venomous snakes in the Sahara and the only ones likely to be encountered in the sand dunes are Desert Horn Vipers, Carestis Carestis. Named for their distinctive horns, located over each eye, horned desert vipers are very similar to the sidewinders of the United States. Desert Horn Viper bites are usually very painful and in some cases have proven fatal. Their venom features 13 different toxins. However, desert horn vipers are generally not as dangerous to humans as some of the other species of the Sahara. Almost all vipers have a distinctive triangular head, according to Discover magazine. This head shape is due to the placement of their large venom glands in the mouth. 
Some non-venomous species have evolved a similarly shaped head in order to potentially trick predators into thinking they're vipers. Additionally, most vipers have keeled scales, vertically elliptical pupils, and coloring in patterns that serve as camouflage. Most vipers are ambush predators, said Savitsky. They detect where prey is most likely to be chemically and just wait because they are not expending a lot of energy, low resting metabolic rate, and eat large things, they can afford to do that. Numerous other venomous snakes inhabit the Sahara, but most are not as dangerous as the vipers and cobras of the region. Moorish Daboya mauritanica and desert vipers Daboya deserti are small to medium-sized snakes whose range encroaches into the Sahara. Though both species are related to the deadly Russell's viper Daboya russelli of Asia, they are probably not as dangerous as their larger cousins. Experimental studies testing desert viper venom on mice have shown it to be relatively weak, though capable of causing excessive bleeding and bruising. Species-specific antivenom doesn't exist for the poorly known Latastes viper Vipera Latastae, who also lives in portions of the Sahara. Arizona coral snake might be small, but they do pack a punch. They're brightly colored and highly venomous, with the strongest venom of all snakes bar with black mamba. Western coral snakes are found in Arizona and northern Mexico, living under rocks or hiding in the sand. They have such a small mouth and fangs that it's difficult for them to puncture our skin, but a bite can be painful, although not deadly, as there is now an effective anti-venom. For mice, the desert horn vipers has the most potent venom of any snake in the Sahara. However, bites from saw-skilled vipers or Nubian cobras are often more serious for people. Sand cats are aptly named because they live in the desert to semi-desert areas. Sand cats may remind you of adorable domestic kittens, but don't be deceived. They're fierce predators. They primarily eat small rodents, but they're opportunistic feeders and will also hunt birds, hares, and insects. They often even go after snakes without fear, particularly venomous vipers as generally nocturnal animals. Sand cats do most of their hunting at night. They're impressively stealthy. Skulking low to the ground on bent legs ready to pounce, they use their sensitive hearing to locate prey, even underground. Their features are made for survival in the harsh desert environment. The large ears of sand cats are made for detecting prey. They have thick paws that are built to walk across the hot desert sand, probably in pursuit of prey. Their coats are colored the way they are for camouflage purposes and also to keep their body temperatures cool. They have hairs in different parts of their faces, particularly for keeping sand out. Sand cats don't make many sounds, but when they do, it's not the sound you'd expect. When taking a break from its solitary lifestyle and looking for a mate, the sand cat uses mews and bark-like vocalizations as a mating call. The sounds have been likened to the high-pitched rasps of small dogs like chihuahuas. Because there are typically great distances between individual sand cats, these mating calls are quite loud. When not out and about at night, sand cats live primarily in burrows to escape the heat. That means they're prolific diggers. One recorded burrow was 15 feet long. Like their hunting, sand cats are opportunistic when it comes to their burrows. While they will use their skills to dig one entirely on their own, they've been known to select burrows that have been abandoned by other animals. They will take over the burrows of gerbils and ground squirrels, for example, and enlarge them. Many of the small animals that make up the sand cat's diet are also burrowers, so the felines need to be able to dig them out of the ground. Let us know your opinion in the comment section below. This was all for today. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, stay safe, and we will be back soon with another video just for you guys.